today um, to have a look at the Thermomix. My name is Gemma and I am the Thermomix team leader for Team Thermo fans um, on the north coast of New South Wales. But we've got um, consultants all over the place um, in our branch and in our team and stuff like that. So that's why we're coming to you um, here, there and everywhere today. It's great. So welcome everybody. Thank you. Like I said, thank you so much for taking the time to have a look at the Thermomix. Um, really appreciate you being on. Um, for anybody, I know there was one lady saying that she was hopping on, but she might not have been able to stay for the whole time. Um, after this, I will upload a video. Can you just, oh, thanks Leonie, sorry. <laughs> um, I will upload a video, so if you do miss any um, or you have to hop off early or anything like that, you will be able to watch the replay um, as well. So, before we get started, um, if anybody would like to tell me in the chat, have you got a Thermomix? Um, are, you looking, are you here because you're considering possibly upgrading your Thermomix or is this your first time looking at the Thermomix? If you want to pop that into the chat for me um, while we go as well. And I think a couple of new people just joined us, did they, Rico? That's all right. Amy's got a TM6. Excellent. TM6. Oh, Vanessa got a TM6 for Christmas. Excellent. Lucky you. I reckon getting a TM6 for Christmas, he, that, that um, husband or family or whoever bought that for you um, would have lots of brownie points for the year, Vanessa. No, don't have one yet, but you're interested, Leone. Excellent. Very good. Happy to have you. Um, now, with these virtual cooking experiences, um, you're more than welcome to come off mute and ask a question or pop a question in the chat bar. I've got the lovely Tracy um, monitoring the chat for me, who's my consultant in Coffs Harbour. Natasha's there as well, and they can, um, they can help you answer any questions and stuff like that. Like I said, you're more than welcome to come off mute, but your Thermomix consultant that invited you along today will um, be in contact with you to answer any questions questions one-on-one um, -on -one with you as well. So, very good. Okay, first time, but my sister-in-law got one and is looking to upgrade, excellent. And Cherie's from Kyogle, another place near my old stomping ground, and just upgraded TM5 to TM6. Oh, very good. And Joanne's got a TM6. Sharon's got, what? Sharon, one TM6 and three TM5s. Well, you would nearly given me a run for my money. <laughs> excellent. Rightio, so before we get started, I'll let you know um, what's included. So with the Thermomix, this, this, this is the TM6 that we're talking about today, the latest model of the Thermomix. There are lots of payment options available and I will go through those um, at the end of the cooking experience. The Thermomix is $2,359. Um, like I said, there is lots of um, different payment options and I will go through those. At the moment, when you buy a Thermomix, you do get a free Celebrations cookbook, which is our latest um, released cookbook by Thermomix in Australia, and the option to add a carry bag for only $29. Now, I, the recommended retail price is probably there, is it, Rigo, for the carry bag? 440 No, 140 thank you. I didn't think it'd be quite that much. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it usually is $140, so you are, get, you are saving quite a bit. So if you're ever travelling with your Thermomix, you like to take your Thermomix on holidays, then um, now is a great time to buy um, a Thermomix with the carry bag as well. Um, now, because there is quite a few people looking to upgrade the previous model Thermomix, um, sorry to those that are looking at the Thermomix for the very first time. You, you might um, be thinking, oh, I don't know what, what she's talking about, but I will be making some comparisons today um, throughout. And when I refer to the TM31, this is, this is the TM31, I've, I've resurrected my old um, machine, or the TM5, um, I will make some, some comparisons for those of you who are looking um, at possibly upgrading your um, Thermomix along the way. So we're going to have a really good look at what the Thermomix can do today. So um, if you just go to the screen for me, thanks Shane. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I do have Shane in the driver's seat um, helping me. Thank you very much as well. Um, so your screen of your TM6, 
Um, it's obviously much bigger than the TM5 and the TM31 doesn't have a screen. Um, but you do have a really nice big display um, screen and you do have lots of different functions. So I'm just gonna run through those. You, you still have your ability to do time, temperature and speed manually. So you can still do all your manual cooking, um, all the recipes that you've ever been able to do in your manual TM31, they all will be able to be done in your um, TM6. But if you just slide over, this is where the, the fun begins with the TM6. Um, in here, you will see all of the different modes that are, that are only for the TM6. Um, so obviously we've got scales. Our scales now are to one gram increment. So you can see that they're single, single increments. Um, we can hop out of that. Obviously our dough mode is exactly the same. So all of your pizzas and breads and all that kind of stuff, your, your kneading function is still exactly the same. We've got our turbo mode. Um, now with our turbo mode, that's like um, a, you know, a full burst of power. And a great thing about the TM6 is that you can now have control over whether you want half a second, oh sorry, I didn't mean to put my arm in front of there, half a second one second or two seconds of turbo um, as well. So you've got even more control than you used to have. Now pre-clean, this is a very exciting one. So our pre-clean mode means that even if your Thermomix bowl is really dirty, there's something stuck on, um, you might have some caramelization on your bowl, or you might have done um, sugar work and you've got honeycomb, you know, um, set on your blades, you can just whack some water in there and choose which, um, how dirty your bowl is and start the pre-clean mode, which is a really, really um, good, especially for that sugar work and that high heat work where you do get a little bit of caramelization um, as well. And then obviously we've got the blend mode. You can still do smoothies and all that kind of stuff. Jodie says she loves the pre-clean mode. Um, you didn't think the honeycomb would come off. That's the, that's the bad thing about pre-clean mode. It actually makes honeycomb really easy because you think the washing up's gonna be way too much to do it very often, but it is so easy that it's like, oh, well, yes, I can do honeycomb. I do caramel popcorn for the kids and um, they love it. Anyway, so blending, obviously blending smoothies, all that kind of stuff. Egg boil mode, which, it's one that we didn't think we would get quite as excited about, but we do get very excited about the egg boil mode. So egg boil mode, you actually pop the eggs straight in the bowl um, with water, obviously, and then you can select how you want your eggs cooked. So soft, obviously, or soft, medium, hard, anywhere between. And the Thermomix is so smart that it knows, you know, how what the temperature of the bowl is and how long it needs to get the whole temperature of that bowl up to the certain temperature to make those eggs perfect every time. So if you like your hard boil or your, all your kind of boiled eggs, um, the Thermomix is great for that. And you can do like, I say a couple of dozen eggs at a time. I do have small farm eggs, but um, you know, at least a dozen or a dozen and a half eggs at a time if you need to be doing a lot of boiled eggs as well. So that's really cool. Um, then we've got a kettle. So we've got a little function in here that just heats water up to exactly the temperature you want. So you might want to do like a green tea at 95 degrees or you want to do, you want it to boil it to 100. You can choose that and it actually goes, um, you know, any, any temperature water that you might require for other things, you can um, get there as well. What else have we got in here? Radio. Um, so and now warm up. This is this is one that's been um, really popular as well. So that's like if there's anything that's been cooked in the thermomix. So even like the curry that we're making today, I could put that back in the bowl and warm that back up to eat it tomorrow or out of the fridge um, as well. Thicken mode. So that's basically like all of our bechamel sauces and our um, hollandaise and all those really yummy sauces that we've always made in our Thermomix. Um, we've got our own mode for that now as well, um, which makes those actually a little bit quicker than um, what we used to as well. We've got rice cooker mode, 
which um, cooks your rice the same as a rice cooker with the absorption method. Um, and obviously the blades don't move. So that's one of the things with the TM6 is it has the ability for the blades not to move at all. Obviously they, that is in the egg boil mode as well. Then we've got, and I'm nearly at the end. Look, it's like a, it's like a marathon now because we've had so many um, functions added. Um, fermentation is one of the modes in there. Now that is one where the Thermomix actually stays at a low temperature for a long time. Um, you know, all of your pot set yogurt, all that type of stuff that requires that long cooking time. Um, that's what your fermentation mode is there for. Um, and we've got some really um, knowledgeable consultants. If you're wanting to make yogurt, we've got you covered um, as far as yogurt making goes as well. And then we've got slow cook. Slow cook has, um, is one of the new functions as well. And that is for all of your, um, obviously, cook, longer cooking times, most of the um, recipes in the Thermomix, you know, you're done in half an hour to an hour or less. Um, but with your slow cook mode, it's the ones that are those really yummy, long cooked times, really great flavours, um, really deep flavoured meals. And we're getting more recipes added to that all the time as well. And obviously you can, um, you know, Start playing with your own recipes. If you did have a recipe that you love doing on the stove or on a slow cooker, you can um, start to um, put that over into the um, into the slow cook mode as well. Now, sous vide is another um, really interesting new function. Again, it's the long cook time um, at a lower temperature. Sous vide is cooking protein in a cryvac bag in a bath of water, like I said, at a lower temperature for a long time. And it is probably, well, actually, no, it is the best way to cook steak. Um, if you've got four hours, um, it is definitely the way to cook your steaks. Um, you can do scrambled eggs, you can do fish and salmon and all that kind of stuff as well, um, chicken. And, um, you know, all of the, any flavours that you pop in that bag really infuse over that long time as well. And your Thermomix does that for you and you can walk away. And then our most recent mode that we have, um, have added is the peeler mode. Now, um, yes, it even peels potatoes. Can you believe it? Um, so the peeler, just come back to me, please, Shane, is um, this is the blade cover peeler. Um, and it is an additional accessory. So just make sure that when you're buying your Thermomix, you let your consultant know or let her know that you want one of these as well. Um, this basically goes over the blades and peels your potatoes for you. Um, and not just potatoes, any soft skin vegetable, carrots, beetroot, um, that kind of thing. So that's our newest, our newest little toy um, is the peeler. Um, and our peeler is garlic. Yes, Jody does peel garlic as well. And ginger, I heard as well. I haven't tried ginger yet. Um, later on, when I talk to you about host rewards, the peeler is available at the moment. Um, if you've already got a Thermomix, um, the peeler will be available to you um, as a host reward as well. But I'll talk to you about that later. Anyway, that's the end of, the, <laughs> that's the end of all the modes. Did anyone have any questions about the modes? Um, Tash has said, I'm going to experiment with kimchi. Um, could you just, sorry, I just um, lost it. Um, oh, Jo said that my videos on YouTube have saved her with her TM6. Oh, I'm so pleased, Jo. Can you just scroll up for me, Shane? Because I was just going to see what Tash Edwards said, but now I've lost it. Up oh, here. My pleasure, Jo. Um, kimchi and saccharat. Oh, using fermentation. Sauerkraut, thank you, Shane. He's just told me I said that wrong. <laughs> um, I would love to hear how that goes, Tash, because you know me, I'm not really into that healthy stuff. That's probably a little bit too healthy. My, my belly would probably think, oh gosh, what's this? What are you eating? Um, but I'd love to hear how that all goes because, um, yeah, would love to know even more what we can do with that fermentation mode as well. Oh, and Tracy said we can peel almonds as well. Have you tried that, Tracy? I would love to know. Excellent. Okay, cool. Well, on the menu today, um, so this is our first virtual cooking experience back for the year. So I thought we really have to do 
Brazilian cheese puffs because they are our family's favorite and it's not a Sunday afternoon if we don't have some Brazilian cheese puffs. Um, Cherie, no, you don't actually have to have, um, you don't have to have the blade cover to do the egg boil mode. Um, the blades just stay still. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so we're having Brazilian cheese puffs, which are a really cool thing that you can do in your Thermomix. And then we're gonna have the creamy coconut chicken curry with cauliflower rice. So let's get cracking and start cooking. And if there was no more questions, pop them in the chat. You've got to get in quick if you want to get a word in um, here, you know. And I, I'm uh, much to Shane's delight, I am actually doing a double batch of um, Brazilian cheese puffs today. So um, he's very happy. So yeah, sorry, Shane, go to my screen. I'm ready. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I've actually told the Thermomix what's on, um, what's on the menu today. So I'm just going in here. I'm going my week and it knows what I've told it that we're making. So I'll explain what, where, how it knows and about cookie do very soon. Um, oh, you love this curry, excellent, I'm so pleased. Um, so yeah, so I just go into my week, click Brazilian cheese puffs, click start cooking, preheat my oven, which I've already done, have I? Yes, I have, excellent. And then um, we'll, start, we'll start cooking. So um, I've already greased my muffin tin. So I've got mini muffin tray and a large normal size muffin tray, both from the mix shop. Um, and they're great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing little ones and big ones today. Um, so now my cheese, now I am, like I said, I am doubling this recipe today. Um, but as you can see, that's just a whole block of cheese. I'm not gonna worry about cutting a little bit off that. I'm gonna grate that. So I've popped my, and I'm using Parmesan cheese um, as well. So pop that in there and give it a grate. Shane, can you just scroll up so I can see that last comment? Because I can't read it all when there's a big one underneath it. There we go. So now have a look at that. Okay, oh, Tash said, last time I made cheese pass with lactose-free cheese and rice milk, I was really messy on purpose putting into tray and got those yummy crunchy bits that I used as a crouton. How good are the crunchy bits, um, Tash? I feel like it should be in the recipe. Um, yeah, so just, oh, look, there's, you know, I wouldn't say, if you've already got a muffin tin, um, Joe, I wouldn't say go out and buy new stuff from the mix shop, but we do have the mix shop there with really high quality items that if you do need to replace any of your cooking stuff, the mix shop is a really good place because you just know that they're really good quality. Um, that's, that's all. Um, yeah. Anyway, so there's my grated Parmesan cheese. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to pop in my milk and I need to work out what 160 plus 160 is to, what is it? 320? Is that right, Shane? It is, thank you. Well, it wasn't that I didn't know. I just thought I would double check so I didn't make a fool of myself. Thank you for laughing at me. Rightio, and some vegetable oil. Again, I'm doubling this, um, the, whole, the whole recipe. So when, you, um, when you're cooking in your Thermomix and you're thinking, oh, I don't think that's quite enough or I want to halve that or anything, normally um, you just look at the, the amount the total amount of all of the rest of all of the ingredients, and if it's less than a kilo or a thousand grams, um, then normally you can double it. Um, but just you know, trial and error a little bit, and definitely if you want to halve a recipe, um, half half the recipe, and um, you know, still usually keep the cooking time about the same um, as a rule as well. Okay, so two eggs done. Now we've got some um, arrowroot. Um, um, sorry, can you go up again, Shane? <laughs> I've missed a comment again. But Tash has probably answered that. Um, go down. So no oil. Um, look, I the the rose gold trays. Everyone reckons no oil, but I just I'm obsessed with my little. Um, oil spritzer. I've got a little oil spritzer of just olive oil. So I do give them a spritz before I put them in. But 
Um, yeah. Stainless, uh, stainless cheese puffs probably need a little light grease. Yeah, it does say it in the recipe. So we wouldn't want to go against the recipe, would we? Radio. Um, so I've popped in two containers of arrowroot flour, um, which makes these gluten free as well, and some salt. And I'll do a little bit more salt than I would because it's a double batch. And then we're going to mix that all up. So how easy is that? We're done, pretty much. And then I've got some diced bacon. Okay, so I've got some diced bacon that I'm going to add in because that's Shane's, um, that's, um, Shane's favourite addition. And yeah, you can do whatever flavour cheese puffs you want, Tracy. Um, plain is good. I, I really like plain. Um, but yeah, you can do pesto. You could do sun-dried tomato. Whatever you wanted, you could add in um, when, once you put them in the bowl. And you could actually even mix it through if you wanted to put something through. Now you could put it in um, as well. Right, now I'm just giving that a scrape down and it just mixes again. So I'm just going next, next, and off we go. And I've made a mess because I am a bit messy. <laughs> Aren't I, Shane? <laughs> okay, and then we're done. That's, that's our time in the Thermomix. Now we do have a really cool little thing that's called a cupcake pen that you could put this batter into if you were going to be really careful um, to pop it in each hole. But like Tash was just, Tash gave away my secret, my secret to these is I just pour them and I just then go to the next one. And this little bit that looks really messy um, actually ends up being really yummy and crispy in between. Did someone just join us? Welcome. Was that excellent? Hi, whoever that was. We're making Brazilian cheese puffs. It's quite therapeutic pouring this in. There we go. Rightio, that one can go in. I'm going to put the little ones on the bottom and the big ones on the top. I don't know if there's any method to that madness, but... These are going to be real big. <laughs> oh, bacon, Shane. I'll get them out. So normally you would only half fill these, I've just realised. But anyway, they're going to be big. I'm out of practice of doing um, the big ones because I usually just fill the little ones up. Let me grab these out. And I forgot to put my bacon in after that. I just said all about my bacon and then I forgot to put the, pop it in. Anyway, so you just drop whatever flavour you're doing, you can just drop it in on top of them and it makes them even more scrumptious. Arrowroot flour is cheap. Tash. Oh, that one doesn't have many. Righto. Is that hot? No, didn't. Didn't get too hot. Okay, now they've got bacon, Shane. You'd think I'd measured that amount, wouldn't you? Rightio, whack them in. And we'll go on to our next thing. Now, if you were, if you only had one bowl for your Thermomix, um, you could easily just pop some water in this bowl. Um, I'll show you. 
pop some water. We didn't cook anything in there. There was no meat or anything like that. Pop it in, give it a turbo for a couple of seconds, which is the burst of power that we were just talking about before. And I've lost it, there it is. So just a couple of seconds of turbo. Done. And then you could just give it a quick wash and go. Your turbo hack has saved me. <laughs> yes, look, and then it, um, you know, it's almost, it's almost clean. If you were doing something savory, you could just keep going with that. Uh, just to save, to save Shane washing up the bowl later, look at this, Shane. Uh, you know, there's nothing I won't do for you, darling. Look, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep to one bowl today, even though I've got a spare bowl there. Why dirty too? And I'm just going to rinse the lid off. So then the first thing we're going to do with our curry, sorry, I've got my back to you there. Um, the first thing we're going to do to our curry is, um, oh, um, can you just scroll up, Shane? I've missed a comment. Um, the first part of our curry is going to be our cauliflower rice. Oh, yeah. I didn't think you were meant to tap the scraper. No, a few people have picked me up on that, Melissa. And back in the TM31 days, have you, have you had a Thermomix for a long time? Back in the TM31 days, we used to tell people don't tap the bowl, don't crack an egg on the bowl, don't tap the bowl with the spatula. Um, apparently, it doesn't matter anymore, but I was really naughty and I've always done it. So if you don't do it, probably best to still not do it, but um, yeah. Have, have you had a Thermomix for a long time? That's my question. Okay, so our cauliflower rice is going to... Um, be our first part of this recipe. But again, I'm just going into my recipe, into my week. Waiting, there we go. And start cooking. Now the other good thing here, if you are one of those people who likes to, um, oh, Melissa's only had it for a year. Um, you, if you are one of those people that likes to get all your ingredients out, you can just press the little down button um, and then you've got the whole list of all your ingredients um, there before you. So you don't actually have to get the cookbook out or look at the recipe. It's all on there for you. Um, and then you just hit start cooking. And this is where we're going to make our cauliflower rice. So I've just got my cauliflower in chunks. Um, put half of it, half of what you've got sort of in, um, depending if you bought the right amount of cauliflower. And go next. And it just is five seconds. And then you just pop that into your Varoma. Oh, where am I? There. Um, pop your cauliflower rice so far into your Varoma. Then you just want to pop the rest of your cauliflower in and do the same. So it just kind of does it in two parts. Now, the other tip, the other tip when you're using your Varoma um, is if you, when you um, pour your first lot in or whatever you put on the bottom of your Varoma, you just want to make a hole um, that the steam can come up to then be able to touch steam onto your tray um, there as well. What was Sharon's good tip? Because I can't see it. <laughs> I've nearly got the comments mastered. At least I can read them now, but <laughs> I can't see enough of them. Oh, you can buy um, arrowroot flour in bulk. I do use a fair bit, so maybe I should look into that. I do love the, um, the correctly weighed out amount, but that is a whole little thing bit of rubbish that I probably don't need to be um, using. So probably would be a good idea, Sharon. Rightio, so now I've got my cauliflower rice, I've got my little hole in my ingredients on the bottom and yes, <laughs> thanks Tracy. I've popped it into my Varoma, which you will see in a second is my steamer. 
Um, thank you, Tracy. I just assume people know these things. So definitely um, let me know if I do anything that's assumed knowledge that isn't, not, isn't known. Um, radio, and then I just go next for my next step, okay? Um, clean and dry the mixing bowl. I'm not gonna worry about that today. Now we're gonna put in some more ingredients. Some ginger, so I've got a piece of ginger. And some garlic. It says one, I've got five. Um, we do like our garlic in our house. Um, now I do leave the chili out of this recipe just because my kids don't like it with too much chili. Um, but that's the beauty of cooking in your Thermomix. It doesn't know um, that you've left something out and you can substitute what you like. Because at the end of the day, it's much better to um, know what your family is going to eat rather than um, following the recipe by the tea as well. Oh, don't scrape it down. Thank you, Shane. It says don't scrape it down. <laughs> it's just habit. You can't help but scrape it down. <laughs> um, okay, so you leave your garlic and your um, ginger there and you pop in your onion. And now normally when you're cooking in the Thermomix, when you add an onion, it just wants it in half. But if you just make sure you read how it wants the onion, this one actually wanted the onion cut into wedges about three to four centimetres. Um, because it's not actually going to chop that onion any further. That's how the onion's going to be in my curry. So just, that's a good tip. If it doesn't specify, it can just be in half. Um, and some olive oil. And, oh. Do we have a, do we have a, um, this is, a new, this is a new part of the Thermomix, which is taking me a long time to get used to, but this is our splash guard. So no lid, no MC, splash guard on, done. And now we are on high heat. Now, for anyone that's got a TM5 or TM31, you'll know that you've never heard your Thermomix sizzle. Um, now, very soon, we'll be hearing sizzle of, that, um, of those ingredients in the TM6 because we do get much hotter um, than the previous models as well. Um, I think that this is, um, who said that? TM6 is very easy to toggle through the recipe to leave ingredients out that you don't like and add things you do. Yes, definitely. And you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Cooking from scratch, that's what it's, what it's all about is you know, being able to substitute if you've got an intolerance to something or you just don't like something or you don't have something um, you don't have one ingredient. Um, there's, you know, so many times, um, yeah, high heat function goes to 160 degrees. Yes. Who's saying that? Is that Trace? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I can't see the name. All good. Thank you, Tracy. Um, yeah. So if you listen now, can you hear that? Yes, I'm hearing, I'm seeing a few nods. Um, that is actually starting to sizzle um, those ingredients. So that is one of probably the most impressive things when we got the TM6. That was probably the thing that we got really excited about. Um, over the years, I've sold Thermomixes for eight years, and over the years, so many people say, oh, I just don't like how it doesn't brown anything. Well, guess what? Now it does. <laughs> um, so it's, um, yeah, it is a very good, um, very good part of the, of the TM6. Um, now, another thing is I, before I do this recipe, I normally make some almond meal um, and I haven't blanched my almonds or anything like that. I've just literally um, like um, milled some almonds for the almond meal for this recipe. Um, but that's where it comes in handy if you do have that second bowl um, that, you know, if you got halfway through this recipe and realised you didn't have almond meal, you could just grab your spare clean bowl, make some almond meal and then continue going with this recipe. Um, as well. What was that? Oh, or you could, that's right, or you could use your old 31 for that. <laughs> the 31's just sitting there waiting for me needing to use it, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll need, um, I don't think I'll need it just, just quietly, but anyway, we'll see. Rightio. Now, very soon I'm going to put the Varoma on. That'll be my next, um, or once I pop in a few more ingredients. 
that'll be the next part of our um, of this recipe. Now I've only got a minute. Can I tell them quickly about cookie dough in a minute? Do you reckon, Shane? Oh, host rewards. Okay, let me do host rewards. Radio. So as I was saying before with the blade peeler. Um, if you've already got a Thermomix, or if, even if you're just looking to buy a Thermomix at the moment, when, um, when you invite people to come to these kind of events or other cooking classes that we do, or even in-home demos um, at your place or at your consultants, um, we do offer host rewards. So sometimes our host rewards do change. So at the moment, we do have that potato peeler as an extra um, during the demo very soon I'll probably be putting some stuff into a thermo server. So if you don't want to, if you don't know what a thermo server is, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but we also do have bread mats and oven mats as part of our thank you rewards. So if any of those um, items tickle your fancy or you've got a couple of friends that want to look at the Thermomix, just make sure that you yell out to your consultant. Um, our businesses all run on word of mouth um, and you guys are our advertisement. So Make sure you're telling all your friends how much you love your Thermomix, but also um, sharing your Thermomix consultants details with your friends um, as well. So the blade cover is until the 31st of March, is it Shane, or the 1st of March? I can't read that. 1st <laughs> of March, is it? 1st of March, yep. So you have to, you have to host before the 1st of March. So if you really want a blade cover, um, talk to your consultant um, and invite a couple of friends along to our next um, cooking experience or yeah, speak to your consultant, they can share the link with them, all that kind of stuff and we can get you a blade cover. Radio, how's that for a minute and a half? <laughs> Done. Radio, so now we can pop in the rest of our ingredients. Ooh. Oh, that's my cheese puffs. Good work, Shane. Radio, I'm scraping that down now. And I'm popping in my tandoori paste. Now, this is something that I've made in the Thermomix um, from scratch and I've had it in the fridge. Um, it is delicious. Do yourself a favour and make sure you make the tandoori paste. It takes about four minutes, maybe less. Um, and if you um, are making this dish... Um, make it the same day because then you can just use your bowl um, and you don't have to um, you don't have to wash it up um, look at that it's a little bit over but I just wanted to use it all up now I need to wash my hands because <laughs> I've touched it I don't want it on my bench it does stain because it's got lots of um, paprika in it so be careful of that on your white benches um, okay and then we've got some tomato paste do you reckon my cheese puffs are cooked, Shane? What? Oh, they're looking delicious just quietly. Um, okay, and some water. And some almond meal that I've prepared earlier. And you can see if, if Shane's got the if Shane's got the screen up there, you can see that I nothing is an exact science with the thermomix and me. I just um, a little bit extra is fine. Doesn't matter. Um, it always works. Once these pastes are made, how long do they keep for? Um, well, I reckon the best thing, especially with the paste, I, I knew that I was making this quite a bit in the next like few weeks. Um, so I just kept mine in a jar in the fridge. However, normally what I do, I'll show you what I normally do, is I have them in 90 gram lots in the freezer just in a snap lock bag. And that will last forever probably, but you know, a good six, 12 months. Um, yeah, you can cover with oil. Um, that lasted really well. That was probably four or five weeks in the fridge. Um, but in the, in the freezer in a snap lock bag, is the way to go, I reckon. Um, that's Thai, that, that one is the t um, red Thai curry paste. You've got to be a bit careful that you label them if you have a few, because I have made a red Thai curry paste that was actually a tandoori, so it was a bit confusing one night when we had that, but um, yeah, it was still really nice. 
Um, I've chopped my chicken up and I've popped my chicken in. And then I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Um, your veggie stock, if you, um, have you made veggie stock? Um, yeah, you can put them, in, you can pop them in the fridge, um, in the freezer in the thermo from the freezer. I usually just get it out of the freezer when I'm thinking I'm gonna make it and then just break it into a couple of pieces and chuck it in. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the stock is great and I always just leave it in the fridge because you use it so much and it's got a high salt content. So it actually is much more um, likely to survive in the fridge rather than the paste because they don't have a preservative in them. So yeah, anyway, moving right along, let's give that, I'm just going to give that chicken a push down into the into the water into the liquid. I'm going to give it a little scrape. Don't let me forget those puffs, Shane, because they need to come out now. Placed my Varoma on. Done. And now I've got eight minutes. <laughs> um, and now you've got eight minutes where you can clean up your kitchen. You can, you know, peg a load of washing out or whatever. And you don't need to be in your kitchen with your Thermomix, um, which is probably one of the things I love the most about the Thermomix. Not that I'm going to do any cleaning up today because my helper does that for me afterwards, but let's have a look at these puffs. Oh. How good do they look? I'm waiting for the crowd to go wild, but you're all on mute, so, you know... Um, <laughs> feel free to come off and tell me what you think they look like. There we go. Are you yes. No. Oh, it's Don. Hi, Don. <laughs> oh, are you? Oh, don't they? Look at them. Just like Shane never Shane never comes over from the from the um, computer, but look, he's like his hand is just here. <laughs> it's the only time he'll ever taste anything. <laughs> what was that? Too hot, darling, are they? <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased to hear from you, Donny from Tamworth. Yeah, I know you are, darling. <laughs> Bye. Another thermo husband. I don't think I'm going to have enough room here. Here we go. You'll have to keep eating them. Are they good? Yeah, good. See, the, the, the um, bacon's a winner, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just going to leave those. You get the idea. You can get two nice big bowls of cheese puffs. My kids will be very excited um, that we've got cheese puffs happening today. But now let's talk about cookie dough. Here we go. I've got my cheese puff. Love the bacon. Yeah, the bacon's awesome. Um, oh, Jody, you haven't put bacon in them yet. Oh, when we um when cheese puffs first <laughs> look at Shane, he's like, oh dear, back to you. You can just keep talking and not tell him about cookie dough. Um, when we first got the recipe for the cheese puffs, when it was first added to Thermomix, said you should do it as a demo thing. We did a whole cooking class on cheese puffs and what you could add to them, and I just had cheese puffs for days because. We did, like I said, pesto, sun-dried tomato, garlic and extra cheese, bacon. Um, I had some pulled pork ones. Oh, there was just every, every um, ham and pineapple was a really good one. Um, yeah, that, it was just, they were so good. They was, and we just had so many flavours. It's completely endless what you can do with them. So anyway, okay, now I'll tell them about cookie dough. Very good, Jody. try them. <laughs> Um, radio. So Cookie Do, um, basically Cookie Do is our one-stop shop for all of our Thermomix recipes. So all of your, um, all of your 
guided cooking recipes are all on the one platform. So we actually do um, cookie do sessions to help you navigate this program. You do get cookie do free for six months with your Thermomix. Um, and then after that, it is $69 a year to have cookie do. Um, like you can see there, you can search by ingredient, category, collection, favourite book that you've got, all that kind of thing. Um, and then you can, within your Cookie Do app, um, we, we have an app for your phone um, or on, on your Cookie Do on, on a computer, you can do a meal plan. So this is probably the game changing thing about your TM6 is your Cookie Do and your meal planning and being able to do shopping lists. Um, you can even connect to Woolworths online shopping to help you with um, ordering your groceries and all that kind of stuff. And then excitingly, we now have Cookie Doo 3.0, which is our newest um, upgrade to Cookie Doo. And this actually allows you to upload your own recipe. So if you do have your own recipe that you've converted to Thermomix, or even if you do a recipe that is already on Cookie Doo, but you make your own changes. Um, you can make your own recipe on Cookie Doo 3.0 and actually have your own recipe photos, everything, um, instructions on your TM6 to step you through. So there you can see that I've got Wesley's Burgers. So that's just a recipe that's already on Cookie Doo, but Wes and I um, have made some changes to it, how we, how we make it. Um, but then you can see Gemma's scones are there and that's my own recipe that I've uploaded um, to the recipe community and now to Cookie Doo 3.0. So that's our um, latest um, improvement, I guess, yeah, improvement to the Thermomix um, and to the TM6 um, as well. So, oh, oh Jody added Rigo's Diane sauce the other day to, his, to her Cookie Doo. I should have mentioned Rigo's Diane sauce, shouldn't I? He's very excited about that, Jody. You've made his day. It was um, the number one recipe on Recipe Community for a couple of weeks, so he was very excited about that. He's a little bit of a nerd. But anyway. What was that? Oh, more likes than my scones, he just informs me. But anyway, that's not what we're about. We, you know, the scone recipe is very good as well. But anyway. <laughs> Radio. Um, what else do I need to talk about, Shane? I've got a minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> Any questions so far? You guys have been, um, you, you guys have been very quiet, so make sure you, um, yeah, we are a little bit competitive, aren't we, Tash? Um, yes, we are, but that's okay. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? No, that's okay. All we're going to do in one minute or 46 seconds is we're going to give the cauliflower a stir um, and scrape down our bowl and then we're going to cook for another eight minutes, I think. I, sh I almost know this recipe off by heart. And this is a great thing about the guided cooking is you don't have to have a cookbook and remember where you're up to and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just dings and it tells you the next step. So... You know, you can be doing other things, um, you know, having a glass of wine, entertaining, and you can come back and you haven't lost track. Whereas me in a cookbook, um, I lose track really, really easily. Um, search Thermomix recipe community in Google to bring up a world of extra recipes. Yes. Um, are you or Tash going to get the new black model? Oh, Sharon. Um, I Hopefully both Tash and I both will get the new black model because um, as consultants we can actually earn the black model um, but the black Thermomix will be available for a limited amount of people um, probably around the end of March to pre-order. Um, now we're going on for another four minutes but I reckon Tash and I, I can't see Tash but um, I, hope, I, I think Tash will be getting one as well. So it's quite easy for us to earn one. So um, we're very excited about that. So yes. 
I actually was saying to Shane this morning, I don't know if I really want a black Thermomix because all my kitchen's white, but then he just points out that our kitchen upstairs, we've got a black toaster, a black air fryer, a black microwave, and a black coffee machine. So he's like, we've got black stuff upstairs. I was like, oh yeah, we do too. So anyway, all good. Um, radio, let's talk about payment options, Shane. Oh, excellent. We'll talk about that one. Um, so if you if you are looking to get a Thermomix or if you've even got a TM, uh, TM6 already and you think that this year would be a good year to um, for you to try something different and become a Thermomix consultant, you could do what we do. Um, and we would be more than happy to chat to you no matter where in Australia you live. Um, we can welcome you to Team Thermo fans um, as well. So that's an option. This is the kit that you get when you join the team. So for $125, you get the thermo server and the bread mat and the bag um, and the apron. Um, so everything that you need to get started with your Thermomix business um, all for $125. So about $340 of value. Um, now, other payment options, obviously you can do a one-off payment with PayPal, credit card, direct deposit or... Um, What's the new, what's the new thing? Afterpay, is it? Is that what it's called? Yes, Afterpay. Um, I have to add that to the list. Um, but there is lots of different options of how to pay in one payment. So the 2359. Um, my favorite option is the interest free option, which is 24 months interest free with zip money. It makes your Thermomix 24.56 a week. Um, and myself or your Thermomix consultant can definitely help you um, work out how you would be able to get your $24.56 a week into your budget that you're already putting aside for food um, and be paying off your Thermomix. So if budget's a concern, talk to us about that because we really love helping people work that out as well. Um, and then the other option is Easy3 where you pay $1,009 and then 30 days later you pay $700 and then 30 days after that, you pay another 700. Now, for those of you who said that you had a TM31, or even those of you who said you have a TM5, at the moment, thank you Shane, um, or a TM21, that's a TM21 there as well. Um, at, at the moment, it's not even started yet, but very soon we will be doing a trade up offer. Now, what the trade up offer, thank you Shane, 14th of February to the 28th of February, um, what the trade-up offer means is that you can actually purchase a Thermomix for $1,999 um, and as soon as you send back or as soon as you post back your old machine, doesn't have to be working, doesn't have to have all the buttons, can be smashed, can be ran over by a car, believe it or not there was um, a Thermomix returned last time that had been run over by a car. Um, and as soon as you post that one back, then your brand new TM6 um, is on its way to you. So let your consultant know if that's something that you're thinking about. Um, definitely have a conversation with your consultant, um, especially if you've got a TM5. Have a conversation with your consultant about what is the best option um, for you because we'd be more than happy to chat about that one-on-one -on -one, um, with you, give you some other options as well. So yeah, right on. Four minutes, good work. <laughs> Remove the varoma. So there we go, there's our, there is our cauliflower rice. I don't have any other, um, I don't have any other oh, bowls down here, Shane. It's all good. Right, yeah, I'm gonna give this a scrape down. Oh, it smells so good. I'm really looking forward to having this for lunch. <laughs> oh, yum. Right, yeah, so there's our, curry and we're just going to add in our coconut cream. Now, I'm, I'd be a bit naughty and I put the whole tin in because I'm not one of these people that will be able to freeze half a tin of coconut cream and use it next time because I always forget. Um, so I put the whole tin in and then it makes it even a little bit milder obviously for the kids um, as well. But you obviously you could just put 90 grams if you wanted to as well. Um, then basically all that does is just stirs that coconut um, cream through and you're ready to eat. So let's have a look. Let's use one of these bowls, hey? 
Now I would put all my cauliflower rice down here. Now, if I was um, going to serve this for dinner, I would grab my thermo server, which like we were talking about. So the thermo server is, sorry if I just hit myself and that was loud, um, is a double walled stainless steel bowl. So like a thermos, but a bowl. Um, keeps food hot or cold for two hours. So you really need one of those. If, um, if you don't already have one, let us know um, because they're very handy um, to have. And we can get you one much, much cheaper than buying it from the mix shop or online. Actually, I don't think, I think you can only buy a black one at the moment on the mix shop. There we go. So you pop your coconut, ri oh, coconut rice, cauliflower rice in there. I'm going to pop a little bit on my plate and then I'm going to put my lid on to keep that hot for the rest of them. And then I will wait for my oh, curry. And we're done. Have I forgotten anything, Shane? Questions? No? Excellent. Rightio. Well, two seconds and I'll dish this up and I'll show you what it looks like. And speak now if you have a question because we're nearly at the end. And I've done very well on time today. I've just looked and it's 2.57. So <laughs> I was a bit out of practice over Christmas, but look at me. I haven't forgotten how to keep it to an hour. So that's good. Rightio, there we go. So there's our curry. And I'm going to get a little bit extra sauce. Oh. And now with this curry too, in particular, I usually use a kilo of chicken um, to bulk it out a little bit more and don't add any extra liquid, but this is perfect. It was only a half a kilo. Um, and there you go. That's our, that is our coconut, no, creamy coconut chicken curry. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but in Cookie Doo, you'll find it as creamy coconut chicken curry. Um, Tash said, any um, tips on converting recipes? Well, um, sorry if you ask that, Joe, I missed that comment. Um, but we actually do do sessions for people, especially um, on Cookie Doo and on converting recipes. So my quick tips, um, more than happy to do something one-on-one um, -on -one or in a group with you. But my quick tips for converting recipes is, say if you've got, the recipe that you've got is grandma's chocolate slice, or say for instance. My tip is find a recipe on Cookie Doo or on the recipe community that is like a chocolate slice recipe. So it looks like what yours ends up looking like kind of. And then just substitute your ingredients into their method. That is probably the easiest way to convert a Thermomix recipe. And then obviously it is trial and error. You might go, oh, you know, I don't think you need to do this bit or whatever. You might have to make it two or three times before you're really happy with your recipe. When, when actual people who, who write recipe books do recipe testing and, you know, convert recipes of their own to Thermomix, you know, they might cook it 15 or 20 times before they actually publish the recipe. So a lot of the time, if it is already a published Thermomix recipe, it's been checked a lot of times. Um, the other way, um, you know, is once you've had your Thermomix for a while and in the front of your basic cookbook, there are just the basic functions. So you'll work out, um, you know, chopping an onion, halve it in for three seconds on speed five is a roughly chopped onion. So you'll start to kind of pick that up. So if the first thing in grandma's recipe, um, you know, might be roughly chop an onion and add it to the pan, then you'll know that that is three seconds, speed five. So yeah. Um, run through on menu planning and shopping list. So that's another thing, Cherie, that we do in our cookie do sessions is I actually help you work out how to do a meal plan um, and then obviously how to order it on um, Woolworths and all of that. And the next cookie do session is this Wednesday. Can you just check in my diary there, Shane? I'm pretty sure 
It's this Wednesday at 7.30, but we'll just check that. And, oh yes it is, thank you Jody. <laughs> love it. So yeah, this Wednesday at 7.30, um, we'll do a Zoom on that. And if you can't make it to then, Cherie, just register for it. And again, I'll share the link with you to watch the replay if you can't make it. And then more than happy to answer any questions that you might have once you've um, watched that as well. Yeah, Tracy said she's very happy to. Yeah, and we do, um, we do a cookie do session every month for our customers. And you can come to those as many times as you like as well. So yeah. Um, now, Tracy, do your ladies that um, you've got, I think that they want to go into a breakout room. Yep, have you got them ready, Shane? No, he hasn't. Hang on a sec. <laughs> um, so anyone, so I think, um, who, who have you got on, Trace? We haven't got Jill now. Jill? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I think my other ladies that's all right. Um, Shane's working on that, so I'll pop you over to that. Now, there were a couple of um, ladies who were interested in the Thermomix, joining the Thermomix team, um, and I did ask for those to stay on after we um, finish today. So, for everybody else, that is the end of our cooking experience. Thank you so much for coming. Like I said before, your consultant will be in contact with you if you've got any questions that you didn't want to ask in front of everybody or whatever, um, your consultant will be in touch with you today or tomorrow. But bye for now. And stay on if you want to have a chat to me about um, joining our team. And you'll have to come off mute if you want to join our team. <laughs> um, Vanessa, when I send you the email with the replay, I'll have a link for you to register for Cookie Do on Wednesday, Dove. 